Using the ACS712 Hall Effect sensor to measure AC or DC current, these devices detect AC or DC current by allowing a circuit path through the chip and using a Hall sensor circuit to detect the magnetic field and convert it into a proportional output voltage. The sensor runs on 5 volts, has a low internal resistance of only 1.2 milliohms in the circuit path for the current being measured, and it comes in three options for measuring plus or minus 5 amps, 20 amps, or 30 amps. I'm going to be using the 5 amp version, so mine has a sensitivity of 185 millivolts per amp because the device operates from 0 to 5 volts and the output can detect positive and negative current, the zero point is at 2.5 volts out. So if you have 0 amps, you have 2.5 volts and possibly an offset. So if we were sensing a full 5 amps in the positive direction, 5 times 185 millivolts plus the offset of 2.5 volts for 0 would give us 3.425 volts representing 5 amps. We can measure this with an Arduino analog input and calculate what the measured current is. Even though the nominal output voltage is 2.5 volts when there is zero current flowing through the sensor, there may be a slight offset. So with the Arduino, we can try to null out the offset by taking a measurement here when there's no current flowing and then we will know our true zero point when there's zero amps. Then we can do a more accurate measurement. I found several example Arduino sketches and a couple of libraries, so I put the links in my own sketch, but here's the one I actually used. It has a little info here, and this is basically the same wiring diagram I used, so I won't redraw any schematics. I'm taking five volts and ground from the Arduino Uno to power the sensor, and I am taking the sensor's output into analog zero. Then I connect the screw terminals of the sensor in line with the circuit whose current I'm measuring. One thing I did do though, I added two digital inputs on pins two and three. I'll talk about those when I look through my code. I haven't tried this, but on this info page for this library, they also give a suggestion on hooking up to an ESP8266 because the analog input does not go to 5 volts, so you need to scale it. There's a little info about what the library can do. In your sketch, you initialize the library by pointing out which sensor you have so it knows what current scale you're looking at. Then you just simply get the DC current or get the AC current and you specify a frequency. It defaults to 50 hertz, but I'm on a 60 hertz system, so I change this to 60. And you run the calibrate routine when you want to null out the offset in case the sensor is not exactly 2.5 volts out for zero amps. So in the actual functions, when we create the instance, we tell it what analog pin and which module. When I say I have the 5 amp module, it knows my sensitivity is 185 millivolts per amp. So that's the purpose of initializing based on which sensor. If we need to squeeze 20 amps out of our complete 5 volt range, we have less room per amp in which to do it. And even less room per amp if we have to get 30 amps out of this. So using only 5 amps, we get more sensitivity. In order to do the calibration, when there's no current flowing through the sensor, the input is read 10 times and then the average is taken. And then when the current is being read after it's calibrated, it will use this zero value instead of assuming it's nicely at 2.5 volts for zero amps. To get the current in DC, this version of the library takes 10 samples and then takes the average of the 10 and then you convert the reading into an equivalent current. So it takes into account the zero reading, and if we didn't do a calibration, it just has a predefined 2.5. So whatever the average reading was, divided by 1023 is your maximum, multiplied by your 5 volt reference, essentially gives you a percentage out of 5 volts that you've read, and you divide that by the sensitivity, which is volts per amp, and you end up with amps. Earlier we said 3.425 volts would equal 5 amps of current. 
and each increment on the Arduino's 10-bit analog input is 4.88 millivolts. So to get the analog 0 to 1023 reading for a 3.425 volt input, divide by 4.88 millivolts per level between 0 and 1023, let's say 702. So this part of the algorithm right here basically takes the reading between 0 and 1023 and converts it into an actual number that will be the equivalent of the voltage we're measuring. So because we took 10 readings, we're dividing by 10 to just get the one reading, and the reading has subtracted our offset. So let's just say there was no offset when we tried to zero this out. So zero amps does equal 2.5 volts, and now we're trying to measure a full five amps. So our true analog reading is 3.425 volts, and we are subtracting the zero level of 2.5, this tells us that from our zero level of 2.5, we've actually gone up 0.925 volts from the center line. So we're just bringing this down, referencing to zero, because we need to know how far we've gone from whatever level is considered zero so that we can calculate how many amps this equals. So 0.925 is the number that's going to be here at this point in the calculation because we've taken our reading of 0 to 1023, divided it by the maximum of 1023 to figure basically a percentage reading, multiply this percentage reading of bits by the 5 volt full scale, and that says we are measuring therefore 0.925 volts out of a 5 volt maximum. Now divide by the sensitivity, which for this 5 amp sensor is 0.185 volts per amp. So this is our voltage reading divided by 0.185 volts per amp equals 5 amps. So this is how we take our analog reading from the sensor and using the sensitivity of whatever version of the sensor we have, we figure out the current as a number. And then we can just print this out on the serial monitor and say 5 amps, or we can use it for some other calculation, maybe if we want to calculate power. And to measure the AC current, it's an RMS calculation. So taking the frequency, in my case 60 hertz, and you figure out the period so that you can keep sampling until you've gotten one full sample of the sine wave. While one cycle period has not yet lapsed, keep doing readings, factoring in the offset, take a sum of the squares of the reading. So you do a reading, you multiply it by itself and add that to the sum that you're counting and keep track of how many measurements you've made. And then the RMS current is the square root of the sum of the squares divided by how many of these measurements you've taken. And then the same calculation to convert this into an actual number representing the current. And this would be the formula here. We will assume a continuous time waveform with a nice ideal sine wave from a power adapter. So for my sketch, using that library, I'm using analog zero input, and I've also got two digital inputs. One, whether it's high or low, controls whether I want to be reading AC or DC current. So if it's high, it's DC, and if it's low, it's going to do the RMS and do AC. And the sample sketches for these libraries always do the calibration for the offset zero while in the setup routine. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do it when I know there's no current flowing, so I have another input. And when it's low, I will do the calibration. I am using the 5 amp version on analog zero. So in my setup, all I do is I configure both of these custom inputs as inputs with pull-ups. Then in the loop, I just have a variable here, and if I detect that I want it to do a calibration because I know there's no current in the sensor, I go and run this calibrate. Otherwise, next time through the loop, if this input is no longer low, I'll just skip the calibration. When it's time to measure the current, I check my input that controls whether I want to be reading AC or DC current. If I detect I want to measure DC, I read into my variable the DC current. If I'm doing AC, I read in the AC current at 60 Hertz. Then I just print out the result 
to three decimal places because it's in amps, and I want three digits so I can see it all the way down to milliamps. And of course it's nice to know am I currently trying to measure AC or DC because I can change this on the fly by checking that pin every time through the loop. The module that I'm using also has a filter capacitor here, but I think it's only one or two nanofarads, something like that. The readings would be jumping all over the place until I increased the value of this filter capacitor. So I increased it all the way up to 470 nanofarads to reduce this noise a bit. And then using this formula, 0.35 divided by the rise time, the bandwidth of the sensor calculates out just over 300 hertz. And I'm only trying to use it to measure relatively steady state values of AC or DC, and I'm measuring AC at 60 hertz. So for my purposes, this value of filter capacitor still allowed me to make the measurements I want, and it seems to have reduced the noise. For an AC load, I'm using a wall adapter, and for a DC load, I have a bench supply with load resistors in both cases. Before changing the filter capacitor and without calibrating for the zero offset, with no current flowing and set for DC mode, the reading is jumping up to 70 milliamps. Even after calibrating, it's still showing up to 48 milliamps instead of zero. While it's calibrated, if I change it over to measure AC, again with no current flow, I'm seeing 40 to 70 milliamps measurement. When I add a half an amp AC load, I get about 16 milliamps of noise measurement. Now if I switch it over to measure DC and I recalibrate it just to be sure, just like before with zero amps of current, I'm seeing 48 milliamps of noise. When I load it with about 200 milliamps DC, I'm still seeing around 48 milliamps noise. And when I increase the load to half an amp DC, I'm seeing around 44 milliamps noise. Now with the 470 nanofarad filter capacitor added, the values are much more consistent, although it still needs to be calibrated for the offset. Now it's closer to zero, now putting it in AC mode, the readings are actually averaging down to zero. With a 114 milliamp AC load, it's mostly showing 112 milliamps, so that's very close. Increasing the AC load to about half an amp, the measured value is within 16 milliamps. With a DC load of between 40 to 50 milliamps, the measured value is maybe plus or minus 10 milliamps. When the DC load is increased to 480 to 500 milliamps, the measured value is still within plus or minus 10 milliamps. Increasing the load current up through 1.6 amps, 2.2 amps, and beyond, it still seems to track within, worst case, around plus or minus 50 milliamps. Overall, this current sensor seems to do better for larger current values, where you mostly would need an idea that there is a presence of current, and maybe a rough idea for a cutoff if you exceed a certain amount, but without needing to precisely track it. For smaller currents, maybe a different sensor would be better. It seems the noise in the measurements is greatly improved by adding filter capacitance, but this does reduce the bandwidth of the sensor, so your application will dictate if this sensor responds fast enough and is accurate enough to meet your needs.